All you mathletes, welcome to class today. Uh, we are going to start and go over section 4.2, which is about two different theorems, Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem. Okay, so we're going to get a visual going so we can understand uh, what each of these mean. But first, we're just going to talk about Rolle's theorem. So plot the points 2, 1, and 5, 1. Okay. All right, so here we go, here's the two points. Draw the graph of a differentiable function f that starts and ends at those two points. All right, so as long as it's differentiable, you can draw whatever you want. So I'll just do a parabola like that. Uh, you can have it curve around as much as you want, just no sharp points, no vertical asymptotes or whatever. Okay, so before we look at what we drew, let's look at what the theorem says. So the theorem says, uh, let f be continuous on the closed interval a to b and differentiable on the open interval a to b. So for differentiable, the a and the b are not included. Continuous it is, but not differentiable. So if f of a equals f of b, then there's at least one number c in the open interval a to b such that f prime of c is equal to zero. Okay, so looking at our graph, does this theorem actually apply? Well, let, let's see if it does. This graph that we drew, is it continuous and differentiable uh, from start to finish? Yes. Do or does this happen? f of a equals f of b. So in other words, does f of 2 equal f of 5? Yeah, they have the same y value. So when it says does it apply, yes it does. So is it true? Yeah, because the theorem says, all right, well if it applies, and there has to be at least one place where the derivative is equal to 0. And again, what is a derivative? The slope of the tangent line. So it's saying, hey, there's a tangent line whose slope is zero, in other words, where it's horizontal. And that would be right at the top. So we had at least one place where it had a horizontal tangent line. Now you might have drawn something different, like you could have gone like that. And this one has three, that's one there. That's supposed to be horizontal but it's not uh, one here and another one there so the theorem just guarantees one place but there might be more depending on your graph okay so let's look at the requirements for Rolle's theorem and see why they're necessary because uh, we're going to drop out one at a time each of these uh, requirements so the first one is that it had to be continuous well let's drop that out let's just say it had to be differentiable <clears throat> And f of a had to equal f of b. <clears throat> so for continuous, you know, a big thing would be out of like a vertical asymptote in there. Well, if you look at this graph, like there's nowhere where the derivative equals zeros. So the theorem doesn't apply, it wouldn't hold. All right, now let's look at the differentiability. Let's say you dropped out differentiable, but it was continuous and f of a equals f of b. Okay. So where it's not differentiable would be like at a sharp point. From there to there. Well, same thing. The derivative at that top spot, it's not zero, it's undefined. Oops, I'm not sure why I put the second derivative there. So again, the derivative is not equal to zero. And then if we dropped out that f of a has to equal f of b, it 
Don't know if you just heard that, but the dog just jumped up on the couch and was not graceful about it. Okay, so let's say it had differing Y values. Well, what if you connected it with a line? There's still no location where the derivative isn't equal to zero. So the conditions are necessary for Rolle's theorem to actually hold. <clears throat> okay, so example two. Uh, let's determine if the theorem can be applied, and if it does, find all values of C where the derivative is zero. So if you're going to determine if the theorem applies or not, you have to run through these three conditions and show that they hold. So the first two, is it continuous and differentiable? Well, in this case for F, F is a polynomial and all polynomials are continuous or differentiable. Okay, so that part's done. So now you gotta verify that f of a equals f of b. So if you plugged in your endpoints into the interval, <coughs> do they actually come out with the same result and they do because uh, if you plugged in one you get zero and if you plugged in four you get zero so the theorem applies which means that you can actually solve for where the derivative is equal to zero so get your derivative so 2c minus 5 set it equal to zero and solve for c Let's look at part B, same thing. Is it continuous and differentiable? That would be a big old yes. You can plug every value from one to three into the function and nothing's undefined. Is G differentiable? Well, if you don't know by looking at it, then you can kind of think of what the derivative actually is. So for the derivative of ln of x, that's a one over x. So the one value that you can't plug into the derivative is gonna be zero. Well, that's not in the interval. So the answer would be yes it is, but on that interval. And then the third question is g of one equals g of three. Well, that one is no. G of one is zero, G of three is three, ln of three. Those are not the same value. So the theorem doesn't apply. Okay, so sometimes it applies, sometimes it doesn't, but you've got to, you have to run through the requirements uh, to check that or to see if it can. Okay, so let's stop the video here and we'll continue in the next one.